read this and then talk to me about it. Fine. Then we get to the listening portion of that unit. Oh, teacher, can you play that again? Oh, one more time. Oh, I didn't catch it. Can you explain it to me? Who can speak English, they can produce English, but they can't listen. Hey, my name's Antonio Grisepo. I'm a lecturer at Shanghai University, employed by Sydney Institute of Language and Commerce. Under and University of Technology Sydney. Also, I'm the author of the book, The Bone from Brooklyn, and the host of the web TV show, Martial Arts Odyssey. Today, I'm here to talk to you about teaching to listen. This is the annual CAM TESOL conference, the largest TESOL conference in Asia, which is held in Phnom Penh every year. Listening. Listening, the most important but least taught skill. Usage, normal interaction, vocabulary, grammar, context, intonation, word stress, and emotion are all things that we can learn from listening. And yet, listening is the least taught skill of the four skills. Huh? Technical problem? Uses of English. Now, if we ask our students, generally, if you ask the students to rank the four skills and say which one is more important, which is the most important skill? Does everybody say listening? That's a lie. It's a lie. They all say speaking is the most important skill. Why? Students want to go on further study abroad. A lot of times, the students who want to go on study, further study abroad will say that either reading or writing is more important because they're going to be studying at a foreign university and they have to be able to follow along. The other group of students, they want to get a job in an international company and those jobs will require them to speak English. So they will generally identify speaking as the most important skill. However, logically, any job that requires you to speak English will also require you to listen. By not teaching enough listening, we produce uh, graduates who can speak English, they can produce English, but they can't listen. Germersheim, where I spent four long years of my life. This is uh, the University of Mainz in Germersheim, Germany, where I studied applied linguistics, translation. All my classes were taught in German, German or Spanish. Now, interestingly, what I found was reading and writing, although it was difficult, the reading and writing homework was done at home, at your own pace. You could use a dictionary. You could ask people for help. You could take eight hours to do a one-page assignment. So actually, reading and writing was not nearly as difficult as the listening, because when I listen, when you're sitting in the class listening, it's in real time. If you miss it, you miss it. It's gone. Now, I'm very, very, very old compared to some of you. So when I was studying, we didn't have the MP3s and the recorders and all these things. So we had to sit in class and listen, and if we missed something, it just went by. So my argument here is, for a job, listening is very important. For studying abroad, listening is very important. Students don't always recognize that. Institutions don't always recognize that. Listening is the most important, but most neglected skill. The tale of sato -san. Now. I work for Sydney Institute of Language and Technology in Shanghai, but I also teach uh, some Japanese businessmen on the weekends. All of these men fit the same profile. They are managers of Japanese companies, and they are managing staff, Chinese staff, in China, maybe at a factory or an office. So they have to communicate with their staff in English. When they come in, they all tell me the same thing. I've been studying, reading, and writing my whole life. I need to practice listening. No. <laughs> they all come in and say they want to practice speaking. <laughs> okay. And uh, we sit down and we do the book. We have uh, uh, the book that we use there is a, uh, like a business English book, commercially available. I won't say the name because they're not paying me for an endorsement. <laughs> but we use that book and the students are at the appropriate level. They do the reading, they're fine. They answer the questions for the reading, they're fine. They do the writing, they're fine. We get to the listening part. Oh, and even the speaking. They're fine. Read this and then talk to me about it. Fine. Then we get to the listening portion of that unit. Oh, teacher, can you play that again? Oh, one more time. Oh, I didn't catch it. Can you explain it to me? And then we struggle through like this. We get through the listening exercise. They write the correct answers in the blank. And then what do we do? We move on to the next chapter.
English education lacks listening. This is across the board. In addition to night school and private lessons, my Japanese students tell me they have had nine years of English. Nine years, plus they all went to Juku, they all went to private English schools at night. As adults, they're continuing to study, they're taking the TOEIC exams, and yet, your listening is substandard. Chinese students, in my Shanghai University program, my, my Chinese students have all told, they all told me they had 12 years of English at school in China. I was amazed to hear that. You know, in, in, in Italy, it's, it's two years. You do two years of English at school. In China, they do 12 years. And yet, neither my Japanese students or my Chinese students can just flip on the TV, watch a movie, or watch the news and understand it. And everyone just accepts this. Okay, why isn't listening taught? First of all, TESOL diploma, 80-20 rule. It's supposed to be 80% 80, 80 Student talk time, 20% teacher talk time. Guess what? Your students are talking, they're not listening. It eliminates the opportunity to do any listening. Beyond that, we have a student-centered classroom, right? As of the 1980s, and they had the new ESL method, and now student-centered, student-centered, focus on the students. Students constantly doing dialogues with each other and things like that. What happens? Students focus on the faulty production of other students then, the native speaker model from the teacher. How can they possibly get the model from the teacher if the teacher's not allowed to talk? These universities and institutions pay a lot of money to bring the foreign teachers there and tell you not to talk. And I'm not criticizing anyone. Explaining about listening. Okay. You will speak English on your first day. This is the number one uh, phrase you will see on any adverb for English lessons. promise is to teach what? Speaking, not listening. <laughs> Cheating the students into learning English. You don't want to cheat your students, do you? If your students came to class and were told to sit and listen for 45 minutes, they would feel you cheated them. Another reason why listening is not taught is because it is hard to evaluate. Okay, if you're marking written assignments, essays and things like this, number one, you have a physical copy of the paper. You have proof. If you ever had to go in a court of law and say, this is why I gave this grade, you have a physical piece of paper you can refer to. Also, you have grade descriptors. Also, I can mark it and have another teacher mark it and then see if we have the same grade. It's very difficult to evaluate listening. There's no, there's no proof. How do you evaluate listening? How do I know in this room right now Who's listening, who's not, and what percentage they're hearing, what percentage they're understanding. Isolating listening skills is nearly impossible. Example, you have, a, you have an exam where you read a passage, and then you have questions to answer. Okay, this is testing, you're reading, and if the test is, uh, say, uh, a multiple choice or true-false, okay, this is a pretty good assessment of your reading. If the test asks you to write your answers longhand, this is both an, attest, uh, an assessment of reading and writing ability. Right. So already we're breaking away from, uh, from evaluating the isolated skill. How do you test listening? Now, t a typical listening exam is the students listen to something, then they read questions and write answers or circle answers or something. But that is not testing the listening alone. That is testing the listening as well as the reading and possibly the writing ability. Evaluate reading. Students can read a passage and answer questions. Evaluate listening. Students need reading and writing to answer the question. 